Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis, getting into the week ahead, the 24th of September and uh, after a week filled with central bank meetings, attention will once again shift to macroeconomic data in the US. Uh, the spotlight will be on the PCE price index as well as personal income and spending data. Additionally, the focus will be directed uh, towards durable goods orders, uh, the final reading of the second quarter GDP, growth rate and spending and new home sales. And in Europe, September inflation rates will be released for the euro area in Germany. That's quite important. Finally, investors will set or are set to monitor LFO business, climate, GFK, consumer confidence and retail sales figures for Germany, along with industrial production, retail sales and unemployment rate and consumer confidence. Um, and that's all pretty much important and uh, in terms of GDP and the uh, Bank of Japan monetary policy meetings so um, in Japan so that's all from tradingeconomics.com so um, a lot of the major banks um, you know announced um, whether they were hiking or holding uh, last week which we'll get into and um, yeah looking ahead all that central bank uh, announcement is out of the way and so now it's all about the data supporting that narrative that's what's really important and um, and so yep yeah, if you are in the um, the mentoring group by the way uh if you go to the trading videos channel in the discord area trading videos channel uh, i've uploaded i think about nine videos this week um we've also got in-depth weekly fundamentals and in-depth technicals as well as like i said of another uh, eight or nine videos uh, this week including the live group call where we went over um you know again uh, really in-depth fundamentals and, and trade setup so loads of videos in the uh, trading videos channel for you to watch and also as well if you do want to get involved in uh, private mentoring i will be opening the discord group up on the 4th of october i know many of you have been asking um it's going to be for a limited time only by the way i'm not going to be opening it for for long and it might actually probably be the last time i open up this year i might open it in december maybe not depends um but 4th of october for maybe a few days. So if you have been wanting to learn really in-depth fundamentals and supply and demand um, concepts that aren't really taught online, um, go to trading180.com and the enrollment starts on the 4th of October. So getting into the um, the technicals, right? And so uh, starting off on the dollar index and overall the Fed uh, held, it was a kind of hawkish hold in September. Now is there a still a hike in uh, November and so uh, Fed signals uh, f uh, last week that the higher for longer rates uh, with rates almost rate hikes sorry almost finished and so uh, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell made clear Wednesday uh, the central bank is close to done raising interest rates but his colleagues delivered the message that resonated borrowing costs must remain higher for longer amid renewed strength in the economy and um, um, if you've been in the mentoring group, you would have known this for quite a while, matter of fact. We've been buyers of the dollar. And the higher for longer narrative is something that, again, I pointed out a few weeks ago. Um, and really to kind of explain it and why it's supportive of the uh, the dollar um, is because uh, imagine you have um, two central banks, basically, right? You've got a central bank and you've got bank a who is um who is high, who is holding rates right who is holding rates but what what it was was that let's say for example this was um first half of the year and this is second half of the year so this is a q i mean say q1 so this is um this is h2 let's say second half of 2024 right so sorry 2023 2023 and this is h first half of 2024 yeah so this is 2024 right now um so so because the data and the economic data has been supportive of 
um, rate hikes in terms of GDP growth, right? So the, the forecast was that, in fact, GDP was supposed to contract. Therefore, there would have been rate cuts, right? Because rate cuts typically are, you know, follow um, uh, contractions in the economy, yeah? But imagine that was the projection, but now it's not. Now it's the fact that they're going to be holding rates for longer. Yeah, so rate cuts were expected due to GDP contracting, and that was the old forecast. Yeah, but now the new forecast, yeah, based on uh, the data, is that um, in fact they're going to be holding rates for longer. Yeah, so. You know, we're obviously second half of the year of 2023. And so this is the new, you know, the new forecast. This is actually supportive of the currency. So this should keep the um, uh, the dollar appreciating, right? Because they're no longer looking to cut rates. That was the old one. And now the new one is that they're going to hold for longer. So when you start hearing other central banks talking about holding for longer and higher for longer, um, it's it's really about the um, interest rates um, obviously staying higher for longer and the fact that potentially um, the economy could also as well avoid a hard landing. And so you're, you're seeing soft uh, landing narrative, right? So soft landing narrative. And so uh, soft landing in the economy is that, you know, we, we could... Basically, obviously, we're going to contract, but we're not necessarily going to go into a deep recession. So this is what's happening with the US. Yeah. Um, and I was meant to do a comparison. Matter of fact, can I undo? Excellent. Yeah, I can undo it. Um, now, imagine compare that to, let's say, another currency, uh, another country. Um, let's say, for example, the euro. Right. So the euro, maybe, you know, they were expected to potentially hold for longer now, uh, in fact, I'll do it like this, right? So let's say, you know, first half of the year, this was this was gonna be the forecast. And, you know, they were maybe looking to hold, right? But now, in fact, the new forecast is the fact that they could start to cut rates due to economic contractions, right? So this was, again, if we go into this being the old forecast, OLD, right? And this is now the new forecast for, you know, the euro or whatever, you know, uh, central bank, right? So they're looking to cut sooner. So the market is, has to price in the new forecast based off of what is happening in the economy now and the data and so um, they're pricing in cuts but pricing out cuts for the US dollar and so there is another type of diversion um, when it comes to interest rate and monetary policy this is uh, some stuff that they don't really uh, teach you um, online you won't really find that information online um, by a typical retail trader anyways um, so going back to, sorry, this, and that's basically what's happening here. And that's what is being explained. Yes, yeah? so this is after a rapid series of rate hikes over the past 18 months. The Fed can now proceed carefully, Powell said. A sentiment he repeated at last dozen, at least a dozen times on Wednesday during a press conference that followed the central bank's decision to leave rates unchanged. And so, you know, it says here that the um, in quarterly economic projections released uh, following two-day policy meetings, 12 and 19 Fed officials said that they still expect to raise rates once more this year. The bigger takeaway for investors was the revelation that policymakers see fewer rate cuts than previously anticipated in 2024, in part due to a stronger labour market. And so basically they're saying uh, that the uh, soft landing scenario is going to be met with tighter policy, said so Brett Ryan, a senior US economist at Deutsche Bank AG, that was the main takeaway so that you know along with you know resilient economy etc is um, supportive of the dollar of course the data has to support the narrative but for now the dollar remains for me a buy in my book and so any pullbacks right doesn't mean that because it's a buy that it's going to continue going higher in fact kind of expecting a bit of a pullback or the dollar to get weaker 
uh, you know, at some point, because, you know, you've just seen this, you know, prices pretty much make higher highs, higher lows with no major pullback. So um, I think we should get at least some sort of pullback at some point, whether it's this week, next week, the week after, who knows. But um, once it starts to pull back, um, then I will start to initiate more buys. So the dollar for me is a buy. Um, dollar yen um, is another interesting one. Prices are going higher now. The yen, um, Bank of Japan Ueda uh, came out this week and he tamps down on speculation of rate hike and pressuring the yen. So he remained dovish. Officials keep policy unchanged as expected by economists and yen weakness outlier stance on stimulus set to continue. So Bank of Japan Governor uh, Kazuo Ueda uh, tamped down on speculation of a near-term interest rate hike after the central bank chose to stick with its ultra-easy stimulus, a decision that renewed downward pressure on the yen. So the market was hopefully, well, uh, hopeful that, of course, there was going to be uh, maybe some sort of hawkish rhetoric which would push the prices down. Central bank's not doing that. So now I think it's all about intervention um, as prices start to go higher towards this 150 area they're going to it's likely that they'll um they're, they're going to intervene now nobody knows if he's going to be right at 150 or even 151 or even 152 even 153 but we're in that intervention zone and so when you look at you know what happened last year um in september and october uh basically they intervened in september and for the first time since 1998, it didn't drive prices down. But then when they intervened again, the second time um, beyond 150, that's when prices pretty much went like 2000 pips to the downside. So we're up at this zone again. That could happen. Let's see. We're in that zone, right? Where uh, where they could start to intervene to try to um, uh, uh, support an undesirable weak um, yen so we're in that zone now so look for uh, if you are looking to get ahead of that look for some short trades probably go with a wider stop um, it'd be difficult to uh, go with any kind of intraday trades probably look at more more higher time frame entries and look for potential for uh, um, for some downward moves and looking to really kind of be in a trade before the intervention because by the time the intervention comes uh, it'll probably be i wouldn't necessarily say too late but um you know you might have missed a, a, um, a bit of the move and you know where your stops have to be placed might be a bit disadvantageous anyways um you can make arguments for both cases for for either buying or selling personally where where price is um i prefer the opportunity to try and look for short trades on the dollar yen and so uh, let's see you do have in fact um uh, quite a large demand zone here but within that demand zone a technical demand zone you do have an area of support and resistance you've got one there you've also got one right there as well so i think those are really the areas to look for any kind of buy trades if you are looking to buy the dollar and we get a bit of a pullback but if you know they let's say for example the, uh, the bank of japan intervened then all bets are off the table there's no technical level that you know is going to stand in the way of of um, intervention uh, per se so i would rather if, if prices just pull back naturally without you know the um without the bank of japan intervening then you know these i think these areas are decent areas to look for uh, some sh uh, short-term uh, long trades uh dollar swiss and the dollar swiss has just been going strength to strength i've been looking for an entry a decent pullback um but unfortunately have not got one so uh we are up into these uh demand zone or these supply zones here so we've got last time there was a demand zone is down here so for me uh still looking for a pullback right into you know this area here before trying to establish any kind of long trades there is horizontal support as well in that zone so that's quite nice you also do have i think a bit of trend line um support as well in that zone so if prices do come back down into this area you've got definitely a lots of technical analysis in there to support your uh, uh, buy bias if you as if you are buying you know um have a buy bias the swiss franc did um 
the hold rates surprisingly and so uh, we think that this is the end of their hiking cycle so uh, they've reached their two percent target in terms of inflation and really and then they had a, a contraction in gdp so there was really no reason for the um, swiss national bank to want to uh, to hike rates i was scratching my head when they kept being hawkish about it but um yeah it didn't make any sense and obviously that came out and um yeah the market didn't believe them so well the market believed them but they uh, basically uh, changed their mind on on being so hawkish so uh, for me any pullbacks are buying opportunities on the dollar swiss dollar cad the canadian dollar is going from strength to strength really kind of based on um better than expected job reports and also as well higher than um uh, expected inflation that came out recently so there is um there is uh i'm trying to think why did i put that as demand but uh yeah there is that going on so in as well we've got higher oil prices so with higher oil prices you definitely have um uh i would say oh that's the reason why i put it i think it's because it was there that's where it was um yeah, you've got better than expected economic and uh, inflation data, which is a signal into the market that there could be the potential for a rate hike. So um, against the US dollar, um, I don't really like taking this trade simply because you've got two uh, central banks who potentially could look to high crates and so um, you're looking for more divergences so um, if you do want to get short and buy the uh, the Canadian dollar that's the first level or you're looking at either buying the US dollar right there or right there but uh, for me it's not really clear so I'm not looking to take uh, this trade New Zealand dollar US dollar I think this is an interesting uh, pair my bias is more to the short side although we have seen uh, better than expected GDP numbers come out of New Zealand and so I think there's definitely some short term positive sentiment surrounding New Zealand dollar and that could pull back to either these highs here or even beyond that to the underside here the 60.5 uh, um, areas uh, well sorry point zero zero point six oh five area um, you know but I do think that the dollar does have have the edge but um, yeah there's, there's uh, the, the New Zealand dollar I think is a buy against probably uh, another currency like the Swiss franc so um, yeah but for this currency pair I think you know more short side so either the top end of that supply zone there or up into the underside of this supply zone um, around here so let's see uh, what happens with that uh, the pound dollar pound dollar this week has been uh, very interesting had some really uh, some nice trades on this I actually uh, traded a one minute chart for the first time in ages for a very long time we were buying actually at lows and that worked out to be a really good um, trade by the way uh, that is if you are getting our member um, I explained the trade on the 21st of September talking about the, the uh, GDP rate hold shorts at expensive levels explained and then the next day I gave an update um, you know basically shorting at lows buying at highs GU and GA so both of those trades the GU and the GA worked out to be uh, nice trades on a one minute chart uh, some good risk reward on that and uh, yeah profitable uh, this week on both of those taking advantage of the uh, the rate hold which um, we saw so traders threat Bank of England pause to hurt pound as inflation still a threat so pound slides to six month low at uh, as BOE Bank of England rate hikes grind to a halt investors warn of rising energy prices strong labor market now uh, the pound slumped to a six month low and gilts fell on and that's basically gilts are basically government uh, treasury bonds fell on worries that the Bank of England is being too timid in its fight against inflation setting the nation's assets up for further losses the concern is that by keeping rates on hold Thursday the Bank of England is underestimating a host of factors that still threaten to push consumer prices higher focusing instead on softening the blow that tighten, tighter policy is having on the economies so this is bad for both sterling and gilts 
as we know, is as they are taking risk with inflation as the pound is falling. Uh, the Federal Reserve is hawkish, wages remain strong, and the labor market is still tight. So um, let's see. So the pound slumps after Bank of England rate hike uh pauses rate hiking campaigns so you know the the you know anyone who says that fundamentals don't work um you see any evidence of it here right it's um it, it, it's what basically moves price so traders are already turning bearish on the pound ahead of thursday decision um, with the market effectively spit on whether the bank of england would raise rates or not and now with another no hike um longer uh, sorry, hike no longer seen as certain. The outlook is looking increasingly bleak. And so for me, oh, don't know why it went like that. But basically the um, the point in it is or was, yeah, that um, the pound is basically, you know, um, they because they held... Uh, it was seen as a bit, a bit quite dovish, and so the market has to price out the um, the hike that was, you know, expected by fifty percent of the market, and so um, we ended up going to the downside. Now, I think any pullbacks into this supply zone here is going to be really nice uh, for a short trade. So, uh, pound dollar either up into that zone there or you're looking at if it goes further up into the one two fives i think those zones are going to be really nice for a short trade again just hoping that the uh the data for the us is still continues to be strong then that should be actually quite a nice um uh, short trade um at that level so that's where i am with the pound dollar my bias pound yen Again, still looking at short trades on this um, in line with trying to get really short um, and anticipate intervention while I'm in the short trade. So let's see what happens there. So if you do get a pullback into, in fact, it'd probably be more uh, as a new zone. In fact, let's have a quick uh, draw. So it will be from here. So it's all that basically right there. Let's just delete this one here. So any pullbacks into the, this zone, I think underside of that zone is going to be nice for a short trade. Yes, the Bank of Japan is dovish, but keep an eye on the dollar yen. And if the dollar yen starts to reach 150 and one, you know, 151s, and they haven't intervened yet, and then you start to see the same thing happen here, then I think you. Well, so, well, I am anyway. I can't tell you this isn't financial advice, but I would definitely look for uh, some short trades because, um, as I said, the 150s are where the um, 151s are where the central bank of Japan are looking to intervene or the market is expecting them to anyway. So that should push the yen, you know, down across all uh, currency pairs. Uh, Euro dollar and the Euro dollar, um, some really nice trades um, this week. Um, in fact, uh, there, I did uh, post a trade in the group. Let me just see if I can find it quickly. Yeah, so here it was. It was on the 15th of, uh, of September. And we were looking at, I posted this uh, this trade idea, this trade setup, and uh, uh, made a video for the private guys in the uh, in the mentoring group. And we're talking about this being a capture pain relief, a CPR trade setup. And um, you can see actually, in fact, this ended up working out uh, really nicely. If we go down to like a lower time frame chart, basically this was the uh, the trade. So looking at that zone, that was it. Right, it was really from around here. That was where the supply zone was intraday. Yeah, go then back to that chart. That was pretty much it. I was saying it kind of starts from around here, but really, you know, um, it was uh, you know the level we're looking for is, is around these highs. So uh, again, no one knows the exact turning point, but I knew that this zone was a was a powerful zone in terms of uh, supply, and so. Pretty much that's what happened around here and then got nice, uh, I know some traders end up getting in on that and uh, yeah, really nice trade to the downside anyways. Um, so that was that and uh, where are we now? Uh, again, bias is really to the short side. I think we really, if we're looking at, uh, at 
the euro dollar again more short trades right it's just i can't see the reason to want to buy the euro um we technically are making lower lows from around here um not the not the, the the sexiest chart in the world in terms of supply and demand zones but um yeah i would really want to wait for prices to kind of pull back into uh, any of these areas here and especially if you've got maybe some sort of horizontal um support and resistance within uh, certain zones so just zooming out a bit you can see that there is a nice little zone there you can see it's quite obvious so up into those 108s maybe 107 70s i think along with that supply zone i think that's going to be quite nice but fundamentally um the eurozone um it says here that eurozone inflation eased last month revised data show so inflation is coming down which is good for the central bank but also at the same time you've got weak euro area pmi suggests economy facing contraction so um basically uh german and french uh, french economies key drivers of regions downturn so those you know the economy is expected to contract so that's the reason why um the euro you know the, the european central bank are less likely to hike rates going into the rest of the year right because their economy is contracting and to hike rates you really need your economy to to, um, to be growing, right? Or at least be able to support uh, rate hikes. So I do think that anywhere around this 107.30s at the very earliest up to maybe the 108s um, is where prices are likely to stay. If it does go up to the 109s, that'd be an absolute bargain, I think. Unless something, again, you know, materially changes in terms of, you know, there's um, some, uh, some bad news for the dollar and some really good news for and and you know not just one data point but really good news and continual news for the euro um even things around china and growth then um i think you know the euro could possibly be a buy but for now it doesn't look like it um as the uh, the economy is contracting quite a um, say quite a lot but it doesn't look good in comparison to the uh, us so for me shorts all the way um just depends on which zones we're looking at either the 107 35s up to maybe the 108s would be really nice to look for some short trades uh euro um euro yen again i'm sh my bias is to get short on this if it prices do come up as well uh, i'm looking for some short trades i think the highs around this uh 15s is very very nice for a short trade especially if you know i'm in that trade and they start to intervene the bank of japan start to intervene that would be a really really nice trade i'm hoping that i am in uh, that trade before they do intervene so let's see what happens um for the euro yen but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro then you can get long i probably wouldn't start looking for this there is a stop hunt trade below these lows but you're probably looking at that demand zone as a uh, as a long trade euro pound both uh, currencies i think are on the weak side not really interested in taking uh, looking to take this trade or trade this pair anymore um yeah, it was looking a few weeks ago like the pound was had the edge, but now um, I don't know. I really don't know fundamentally, so I'm going to stay out. You do have some demand uh, in these areas. You've got demand there. You've got demand in and around here and here. And so, um, if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, the euro against the pound, then you're looking for a pullback into those uh, 0.86 areas. Uh, or if you're looking to be a you know a buyer of the uh, the, the uh, British pound, then you're looking at probably now or maybe a deeper pullback into that technical area, which is actually very nice from a supply zone, but also we've got some added horizontal uh, resistance, uh, support and resistance in there as well, but not a pair that I'm interested in trading. Also as well, you've got the um, Australian dollar. So the Australian dollar, um, uh, doing okay, I think. Um, there's, you could you could start to look for reasons to buy the Australian dollar, but I think the, the, for me, I think the catalyst to buy the Australian dollar will be a recovery with China, but it doesn't look like it's happening at the moment. So I think my bias is more to the downside. So I think any kind of uh, stop hunt or 
trade into this supply zone i think is going to be really nice for a uh for a short trade if you are looking to buy the australian dollar then i think again a pullback probably into a deeper uh, demand zone is going to be where you're looking for and there's also as well a bit of a stop hunt uh, level to be stop hunted just below that so that the six three fives so um yeah but my personal preference is to look for short trades if i'm looking to take this currency pair um and gold so gold um gold i think is going to struggle for a little bit and i say struggle but uh probably more auction in this in the short term uh with with the dollar um, being, um, you know, quite strong and soft landing, uh, you know, likely to be the outcome or the projected outcome anyway. Um, it looks like a recession or a deep recession could be avoided. And so risk, um, you know, less off, although risk is more off than anything simply because of china but um i think the uh, the dollar benefits because the dollar gives a yield plus as well you've got treasury uh, uh bond yields at their you know um, some of the highest levels they've been for years and so why hold gold which doesn't bear any interest and you can either hold uh, treasury bonds um at probably what a 10 year at nearly five percent or something like that, or, or is it the two year at five percent and so um yeah, money might be flowing out of the um, out of gold for now, um, of course. But if there are fears of the you know economic contraction that start to gather pace, then I think these areas are decent buying opportunities. But I think for now, with the dollar doing well, the data supporting uh, the dollar, um, I think the uh, the downside is more compelling. Uh, than the upside so um, let's see what happens in the short term obviously you know over the medium to long term uh, gold is always uh, a buy as it's a hedge against inflation and currencies uh, because at some point you know you have an economic cycle which basically you have um, you have uh, you know uh, expansion and the boom phase and then you have the contraction then you have the bust or slump phase and the recessions and then you have the recovery and then you have the um, expansion and then the boom again right and it's like a basically it's a cycle that happens so um we'll see what happens you know over the medium to long term but i think in the short term gold is a um it's probably likely to be a uh, a, a short um, if you're looking to trade gold. That's just my opinion, of course, not financial advice, um, because money really isn't flowing into gold. If you've got, um, like I said, bonds are you know uh, yielding a higher interest rate, and if just for holding dollars, you're getting somewhere like five percent, right? So. Um, you know, money flows into and out of different asset classes. And the question you have to ask yourself is why is, you know, money going to flow into gold, right? Why is the big money looking to buy gold? So, um, of course they do and they, hedge, they obviously hedge, but at the same time, is it going to be enough to really kind of drive prices higher when, um, you know, uh, recession fears are fading, uh, rate cuts are fading as well. So, um, so yeah, for me, it would be more looking at short trades on that um, on gold and silver. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Just a quick one as well. Um, I'm not going to be around for next week, so um, I'm going to be away. I'm going to be out of the country on holidays. So um, next week I will not have a weekly video, but I will be back on Mon. Sorry, yeah, no, Tuesday, the third of October. And then the doors open for the mentoring on the Wednesday, the 4th of October. So, um, again, it's going to be a limited time I'm going to be open for as I like to keep the group um, small and focused and concentrated. And so, um, yeah, if you if you miss out this year, then you will have to wait until probably next year before I reopen again. So, guys, take care. Have a great weekend and have a great next weekend. Have a great trading week. Uh, stay blessed, stay healthy, and um, all the best. Speak to you all soon.